chose the Manitouish chain is because it's a complex body of water. It has 10 lakes. Uh, it's a total of about 4,000 acres. We decided to be a good candidate because some lakes are connected by very short channels and other lakes are connected by longer channels. Uh, we happen to be right now standing on Rest Lake, which is one of the most uh, separated lakes from the others. Um, each lake in the chain, all walleyes and muskies captured have a different colored Floyd tag, which is I'll be showing a little bit later. Uh, and each uh, tag has a specific number. Uh, the radio tag fish will be a subsample. Walleyes uh, were tagged with radios in Clear Lake and Island Lake. Muskies will be tagged throughout the chain, uh, both males and females, and they'll, that'll be used to follow daily movement. Seasonal movement will be, show, will be used, uh, oh, excuse me, will be shown with the ploy tags. So that's pretty much what, we, what we're going to be doing out here, and it's going to last this summer, all winter, and the following summer. Uh, we're going to be a uh, thesis written and probably some publications about it. Basically, the, the Manitowish chain is, uh, like I, uh, is a total of 10 lakes. It's uh, just over 4,000 acres. It has 63 miles of shoreline. Um, it will be, uh, this chain is used kind of as a candidate to, uh, to determine if current management is correct or if management for lake change should be changed. Basically, how lakes are managed now is a lake by lake basis, each lake having its own specific spearing quota and angling daily bag limit. Uh, this study may prove that that's not the best way to manage chains. It may show that you need to have separate spearing quotas and angling daily bag limits grouped by lake or grouped by the entire chain itself. So basically this will be used to better regulate lake chains in Wisconsin. Right now we have approximately 4,000 walleyes marked. I had a total of 10,000 tags. We're using about half of those so far. Uh, we're going to continue to mark fish in the next couple weeks here. Hopefully we'll get up around 6,000 total fish marked. I'm hoping to get uh, a couple hundred muskies marked total. water that we're going to put over the gills to keep the fish resuscitated while we're while we're doing surgery. Um, just basic surgical supplies. I have sutures and uh, tweezers and my rate. This is the radio transmitter. Uh, basically, this is my transmitter. It's a 151 to 150 megahertz uh, frequency. It gives off about uh, a pulse every two seconds, uh, and it lasts 575 days or 19 months. I'll be able to track the fish this summer, all winter, and then the following summer. He's got some scars on his head and down the side. This is a male. Uh, when they're spawning in the springtime, the females will bite and chew on them. Uh, I'm not sure if that's part of their spawning ritual or not, but it seems to happen on most males. Some of the females will be marked up, but it's mostly the males who seem to get chewed on. Um, in a month, you won't even be able to tell those scars are there, so it's kind of amazing how fast these fish can heal. The incision uh, in this region here is just about an inch long. Uh, just off to the center of the midline here in the bottom. Um, Nancy is just providing the gills with water, fresh water, to keep the fish breathing while the surgery is going on. So basically I'm going to start. Uh, the, the incision goes in front of the uh, ventral fin here. I'm going to avoid this scar that the fish has and go just a little bit in front of it. And the, like I said, the incision is about an inch long. First you have to peel the scales away with the, the front end of the scalpel. Skin. There's about a quarter, anywhere 
from a quarter to a half inch of belly meat that you cut through. Basically I just hold the cut open so I don't hit any of the internal organs. Once you get through the body cavity, you need about an inch incision. This guy's got quite a bit of belly meat on him. Good shape. Some fish bleed more than others. This one's tending to bleed a little bit. Then I take the transmitter out of the disinfectant and again hit it with the sterile water. And you just insert the transmitter, push it forward a little bit, and the antenna hangs out. I have suture. Basically you do four or five uh, stitches, and each fish starting about a quarter inch from the incision. Ending up about a quarter inch on the opposite side. Snug down the incision, then you cut the suture. The sutures in the front aren't as critical as the ones in the in the towards the back. Uh, the tendency for these transmitters is to come out the back end if they come out. So that's why we put more emphasis towards the rear of the incision or the rear of the fish, rather. Just snug up the snug up the knots here. The last or the second to last suture, you go under the antenna, so you're kind of tying the antenna into the into the fish. You don't tie these too snug because you don't want to rip the the skin. The skin isn't that strong. Basically, the last suture. Start bringing them off, Nancy. Let me get the lake water. Crossing the uh, last suture here to kind of strengthen the back end, like I was talking about before. That's that as far as the suturing goes. Next I will use uh, an antibiotic. And I squirt a bunch of antibiotic in here to kind of give them a little pick me up after we gave them a little incision here. And that's it and we're done. As you can see here's the incision. Uh, relatively clean, so short cut the antenna here, extending out the back of the fish. Now all we'll do is we'll put him into fresh water, and he'll come too.
Here's the transmitter, how it comes from the company. Uh, it has a magnet on it that activates the transmitter. Right now it's currently off. When I remove the magnet, it activates the transmitter and it starts beeping. The way we test it out is we take, we got my receiver here, turn it on, dial the frequency into the on the knobs here. And I don't know if you can hear it up there, but it's beeping. So we know the transmitter is working. This is the transmitter that's going to go in the next fish. So yeah, this fish is, if you can tell, uh, well, she's just squirted an egg out. There's a couple more that are coming out here. We're going to put a radio in her same general region right up in here. You can see the, the difference in the girth of the two, two fish. Females are almost always way bigger than the males. So same process as I did before.